Thank you so much for joining us for this interview. And my first question would be, uh, obviously we are speaking with you ahead of the BRICS summit and we are expecting that the Syrian conflict will be discussed there between the member states with this organization. Uh, the question is, lately we've heard from Bashar Assad a plea for help from the BRICS countries. Would that be possible? Would BRICS countries would be able to help uh, the Syrian situation? And how unified is the position of the BRICS countries on the Syrian conflict? Indeed, it's unavoidable and it's good that Syria and uh, everything that relates to this issue will be on the agenda. The leaders will have opportunity to uh, exchange views on this. Uh, let me tell you that we are not in any way underestimating the gravity of the current situation and all the problems uh, which we face in Syria. Uh, this is not an issue, at least for Russia to support uh, the government in uh, Damascus. We are not in any way advocating the case of Bashar Assad. We are working and we do believe that it is still possible to achieve this goal towards establishment of a platform for intra-Syrian dialogue, for some reconciliation. The impartiality here is crucial, others that has more, have more influence upon Syrian opposition should do more, by far more, to impress these people that they should be uh, really engaged with the government, uh, with the authorities, I would put it rather this way. Uh, there is no alternative. Alternative is more casualties, more tragedy, uh, what we experience there daily. And others at BRICS have very similar views. It has been proven through uh, several events. National positions are being explained uh, by spokespersons, by leaders themselves, and I'm very sure that Durban would add to this what we believe is a unified uh, and coherent message uh, of uh, what should be done there to resolve the problem. I will categorically deny uh, any intentions towards this end. Uh, we in Moscow do think that uh, BRICS uh, has now a very established agenda and uh, any politician, any diplomat who is interested in what is going on there is very welcome to read through final documents of five summits see where things move to, how they evolve. Uh, earlier today, uh, February, oh, sorry, March 21, uh, we have published our own national concept of Russian policy towards BRICS and within BRICS. It's an interesting reading as well. Uh, we are not trying to counterbalance anything in the world. We are trying to catch the wave, the tide of changing reality in the world economy, in the world politics, and, you know, uh, kind of identify areas where it would be natural for countries as big, as influential as China, India, Brazil, South Africa, and Russia to work cooperatively. This is very synergetic. We are talking about multiplying authority and influence, no doubt about it. But this is not to challenge anyone, this is to further our own interests and ensure that our ability to achieve these goals uh, is growing and implemented in practical action. As long as you mention China is obviously one of the biggest members of the BRICS organization along with Russia, uh, we see that the new chairman of the Chinese uh, of, of China is coming to Russia. Uh, his first visit just a week after becoming the new leader of the country. Uh, we also saw that Vladimir Putin made an official a state visit to China just days after he was elected president for the third time. Uh, are we no longer 
in difficult situation? Are we no longer in difficult ties? Is it something of a new era for uh, the Russian-Chinese relations? Forgive me for some bluntness, but uh, difficult situation in our bilateral relationship uh, brings me, or rather my memory, to the days of the spring in 1969, where clashes took place on the island of Damansky and elsewhere. Since that, I would dare to say, we only progressed, and uh, the state of the relationship right now can be very fairly described as an advanced strategic partnership. We do not have any major unresolved problems in our relationship with China. And the very fact that the newly elected Chairman C of China is visiting Russia on his first official trip abroad is a very symbolic and important gesture. Frankly, we are honored. We understand that uh, it means a lot for both countries. We want to pursue and we have a very interesting uh, you know, prospects, a very interesting uh, vision of what can and should be achieved in this relationship. BRICS plays an important role in this context. This is an area, this is a, a platform where Russia and China cooperate effectively on political and economic issues. Of course, there are different approaches. Of course, we can see differently on some things, uh, but that's natural. Big powers have big interests, and those interests uh, do not necessarily coincide uh, at any moment. But uh, uh, the maturity of the relationship allows us to look into the future with a good degree of assurance that nothing happens that brings this relationship backwards. Irrespective of what is going on in terms of our interaction and coordination even on Syrian issue uh, at BRICS, I think we have a big issue uh, on uh, the UN reform in broader terms and more specifically on UN Security Council reform. Uh, no doubt there are differences of views, differences of priorities among BRICS members on this issue. Russia is here, as in many other uh, aspects of this agenda, a balancing force. This is how we want to play out our role there. We think uh, whatever might be the outcome of the current effort to have governmental negotiations on the UN Security Council reform conducted under Afghani chairmanship since 2009, any eventual outcome of these talks should be uh, it, very inclusive. Uh, it should command broad support by far broader than two-thirds uh, of the vote uh, needed for adoption of any resolution at the UN uh, General Assembly. Secondly, we need to maintain the effectiveness of the Council. Uh, easier said than done, but it can be translated into more specific uh, positions of any country and uh, I can go on in explaining it. No need for this. Believe for what I say. Thirdly, we need to maintain a veto right for Russia and other uh, permanent members of the Council. Uh, this is uh, a condizio sine qua non, uh, an unavoidable uh, element of our position. Uh, we would pursue it. And I understand that not only China, but others at BRICS uh, have a good deal of recognition of this very situation. I'm not saying sympathy, I'm not saying, of course, support, that's a different issue, but understanding uh, uh, of the reality. I think it's a very normal base for further discussions and hopefully also for uh, achievement of some results in not so distant future. Um, if we look at the BRICS, they, obviously, the population of these countries constitutes more than a third of the world's population. Economically, so it's very... 2.88 billion. 
Exactly. In Togo. Yeah. Economically, it's also a very strong entity with the, the respective countries being the leaders of the economy on the continent, on their respective continents. Uh, there have been talks for a while of a United Development BRICS Bank appearing, the one you mentioned today at the press conference. Could you enlighten us how far are we in making this bank and how crucial would that be, how strong this potential bank would become if it appears in Thank you for this question. Uh, establishment of this development bank uh, is probably one of the major deliverables uh, along uh, the line of an idea having BRICS uh, more and more prominent in the area of economy, international finance, the de development of infrastructure, exactly the core issues uh, that are very close to our own heart when we talk on the future of BRICS. Uh, it's not been long since this idea was first floated uh, in BRICS. Last year in New Delhi, leaders mandated uh, experts to have an exploratory study and prepare recommendations which was fulfilled and completed uh, very effectively and we are now on the verge of a formal decision. Uh, it would be a substantial, in terms of capital and paid capital, a substantial new international institution. We want to ensure that this bank plays a good role in, you know, pouring capital, uh, you know, constructing loans, establishing uh, credit faci facilities for uh, first and foremost infrastructure projects uh, in the BRICS countries themselves. Uh, we need more of these uh, tools, of this kind of tools, we need, uh, and we need to see how it will, you know, be, uh, you know, introduced into the fabrics of international finance and what niche it will occupy. Several things are yet to be resolved in terms of headquarters, staffing, uh, actual charter of the bank uh, or terms of reference, whatever you call it, but those are secondary things. The major political decision is pending and uh, in a very few days we'll, we'll know uh, what has been decided in this area. Thus also uh, supporting BRICS and enhancing its international role. Well, uh, we have talked on this uh, for several months now. Uh, crisis of Euro Eurozone is something that uh, uh, we uh, follow and analyze for uh, a longer period already. I think uh, the current moment is a very, very opportune one for something uh, like a new BRICS uh, development bank. Uh, of course, no timing is perfect, and it's true for anything, but uh, on this particular issue, I do think uh, that even psychologically and politically, the message that uh, we expect from Durban will have a very, I would say, positive and healthy effect on markets and on the general mindset of people who deal with these issues.